thanks to all the people who yet again entrusted in me your vote as the governor to be the 45th and continue to be the 45th governor of the great state of Wisconsin. By now, the results of Wisconsin's contentious recall election are old news. But that's not what our story is about. Our story starts nearly a year earlier. It was uh, just about a decade ago uh, that I first introduced a photo ID requirement. Uh, it was uh, very similar to what we're passing today. In 2011, Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker signed into law a requirement that citizens present photo identification when voting. Citing widespread voter fraud, conservative governors across the country have been pushing through similar voter ID laws. But the truth is, you are more likely to get struck by lightning than impersonate another voter at the polls. There is no evidence of voter impersonation in this state. No, I've never heard of any serious fraud. The numbers aren't there to, um, to create a solution um, to a problem that's really not there. The recent slate of voter ID laws will potentially disenfranchise thousands of legitimate voters. The Center for American Progress came to Wisconsin in the heat of one of the most bitter elections the country has ever seen to learn how voter ID laws could impact future elections in the state and beyond. I'm Don Miller and this is Florence Hessig. We live up here in Bayfield, Wisconsin way up in the northern part of uh, Wisconsin, right by Lake Superior. Coal is in the deepest lake of the uh, Great Lakes. Ever, I, ever since they... You could vote uh, every election. Yeah, every election I've voted. I've never had any problems. Until now. When Donald read about Scott Walker's new voter ID law, he knew 95-year-old Florence could have trouble fulfilling its requirements. Well, they wanted a photo ID to vote up here, but her driver's license run out. She stopped driving at 90. Most people in this situation would just go to the DMV with their birth certificate to get a new one. For Florence, it's not that easy. She don't have no birth certificate, so she wrote where she thought she was born and they got no record down there. So she must have been born by a midwife. I believe so. There is an estimate, uh, U University of Wisconsin uh, political science professor did some research on it and uh, tagged it at about 300,000 people across the state who, who might have difficulty getting an ID, who, would, who are citizens of voting age. We know certainly that students have trouble we know that older people who don't have driver's licenses, we know that minorities in big cities like Milwaukee who often don't have cars and don't drive, all these things are problematic. Wisconsin's voter ID law requires a voter to present an official form of photo identification to poll workers. While most of us take having one of these documents for granted, for many Americans, it can be a burdensome and costly barrier to exercising our most basic civil right. I think at this polling place, the new voter ID requirements would be a real obstacle because a great many of the people who vote here are people with severe physical handicaps. These are people who can't get a driver's license. In early 2012, two state judges ruled Scott Walker's voter ID law unconstitutional and blocked it from going into effect. The state's Supreme Court will likely determine the law's fate. But in the buildup to the state's recall election, Governor Walker and fellow Wisconsinite, Republican National Committee Chairman Reince Priebus, alleged that voter fraud would cost the governor at the polls. I'm always concerned about it, which is why I think we need to do a point or two better than where we think we need to be to overcome it. PolitiFact judged Priebus's claim false. Voter fraud alarmists point to a handful of cases over the years as proof of a widespread conspiracy. Where we've seen um, illegal voting, um, it was 0.0007% of the vote in the 2008 election was found to be illegal votes. And what of Walker's and Priebus's dire warnings of massive voter fraud during the recall election? Well, we had a, a, a turnout of 230-some thousand, and I believe throughout the day, maybe I've got two or three calls of um, cases where 
um, uh, an elector came into their polling site and someone had voted in, um, under their name. I would have to say in most of these cases we have found that it was poll worker error. Never heard of it until this walker come along and said there's fraud. <laughs> Never was a talk about that. Donald and Florence brought their case to the League of Women Voters, who found them an exemption. Florence will be able to continue voting. But thousands of others might not be so lucky. The real casualty of these laws might just be democracy itself. How do you justify a law that, that keeps some, some eligible people from voting? I've never seen a problem. And we've always been so proud of the Wisconsin system. It encourages people to vote. We have good turnouts. So I see this as nothing but a plan in Wisconsin and across the country to discourage people from voting. America is a good country. Best. We like it. <laughs> Thank you.